I'm afraid there has been a bit of a mix-up, uh, so I'm going to start out with uh, an apology. Someone is under the delusion that there's a poet uh, called Björn Wagner uh, roaming around <laughs> in the world. Uh, that's not me, uh, Stevens. Uh, when I got your invitation, I said yes, because I thought it would be nice to trip to London. Uh, but when I came here, I, I kind of walked around with the feeling that uh, shit, I'm at the Oscars, and uh, people are soon going to find out that I just made like a home movie in 95 for Christmas for my kids. Um, so I'm not a poet. I'm an author of novels. I have one poem, though, uh, but I spent that one yesterday. <laughs> so it was a bit of a confuzzling uh, this morning. So uh, I went back to one of my novels and started looking for a piece uh, that might look like a poem. Um, so I translated that into uh, to English. Uh, so, so that's what I'm going to read for you. But I just need to give you a, a tad bit of context. I know I'm not supposed to do that with poetry, uh, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because this book is about a man who has lost the love of his life uh, to cancer. Uh, luckily, he has a um, complete downloaded version of her on a piece of DNA which is stored in his fridge. Uh, he almost succeeds in bringing this back to life, but he misses the spark of life. It has all her memories, all her experiences, all her data, but he cannot bring it back to life. So what's the spark of consciousness? Okay, so he goes out into the world and starts gathering sensory impressions to lay that on top of the cold and flat dead. So this is his first attempt of gathering these uh, sensory impressions which reminds him of her and compiling them into uh, his love which he is trying to resurrect. This is, this is a real book, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is it. I start reconstructing you from cedar wood and fine sprinkles of cold water. Razor blades dipped in honey, a fire pit and a heather. Sore muscles resting on a sleeping pad under the bright orange canvas. Olive tapenade on cold pasta. The vibrating tail feather of a snipe overhead. Nuclear test explosions. The warm-up sounds of a chamber orchestra. Salty nuts. The engine of a Ferrari F12 rumbling alongside the purr of a Siberian tiger. Goat willow twigs twisted between my fingertips. A spherical crystal glass with just the right amount of perfectly tempered wine and how it equals the weight of your breast and the palm of my hand. Unexpected and undeserved prices. The spark and the smell of a fire steel. The air moisture in a warehouse storing wood for construction. A split second before a head-on collision and wrecked horses peace. Sword streaks on a ferry window. The falling scum from a freshly popped soap bubble. The removal of protective foil from a new mobile phone. Ironide in an open wound. Identifying and excavating a fully formed firm booger. Towels frozen on a clothesline. The air inside a diver's mask. The powder from a dead moth's wing drizzling into my naked eyeball as I change the light bulb. Being rejected by a person you never tried to hit on. Hunger. The shocking sight of the toilet bowl after eating beetroot soup. The changing facial expression of a doll. The weight between the cut and the moment the blood appears. And still, these are only 32 out of roughly 
86 billion sensations needed, one for each neuron in the brain to reconstruct the slightest sliver of how it felt to have you in the same room. <laughs>